Okay, welcome to lesson two. So this is our second lesson, and this is our first lesson where we're going to be talking about some of the content in the course. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about the different types of writing. As always, I like to start with the objectives, and we have two objectives for this lesson. The first objective is to be able to distinguish between the major types of writing and be able to identify writing that falls into different categories. Also, at the end of this lesson, I'm going to give you Journal 1. So the last, at the, at the end of the video, I'm going to uh, give you the assignment for Journal 1, and I'm going to have you complete Journal 1. Don't move on to Lesson 3 until after you finish Journal 1 and email me Journal 1. Once you do, I'm going to email you some feedback, and then after I email you some feedback, um, you can move on to, to Journal 3, or to uh, Lesson 3. So today we're going to talk a little bit about the types of writing. If we start thinking about what kinds of writing there are, it can seem sort of overwhelming because it seems like there's all different kinds of writing, right? There are newspaper articles, there are novels, essays, magazine articles, research articles, internet pages, uh, blogs are writing, Facebook posts are forms of writing, tweets, maybe you're on Twitter, you can tweet, text, it seems like there's all different kinds of writing. In all different styles, right? There's uh, there's magazines like this. Here's an example of a, a journal article. Here's another example of a magazine book. Here's an example of a, a newspaper. Um, everywhere we look, when we think about it, there's different kinds of writing. But when we boil it all down, there are really three major types of writing, and all of those other categories of writing fall into these three major types. The three types are expressive, writing that expresses feeling or sentiment, expository, writing that explains something, usually it's how to do something, or argumentative type writing, writing that's meant to convince people of something. Um, and each of those different kinds of writing that we just saw falls into one or more of these categories. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about is different kinds of expressive writing, different kinds of expository writing, and different kinds of argumentative writing give you a solid foundation for what are the kinds of writing that we can see. Expressive writing is the first type. It's usually referred to as creative writing. Right? It's writing that's uh, things like novels, short stories, poems, memoirs, creative nonfiction. These are all sort of creative pieces of writing. Um, creative writing is usually writing that has um, rich descriptive language and vivid imagery, or sometimes it has metaphors or word plays. Yeah, really descriptive language is a big part of it. Sometimes there could be rhythms if we're looking at a poem or something like that. Um, this is all expressive typewriting. Um, so let's take a look at some quick examples of some expressive kinds of writing. Here's an example of an expressive writing. This is from a uh, famous book, Tom Sawyer by Mark Twain. Maybe you've read it. Um, so here's just a quick example. And as I'm reading it, just take note of the expressive elements of this writing. All nature was wide awake and stirring now. Long glances of sunlight pierced down through the dense foliage far and near, and butterflies came fluttering upon the scene. Tom stirred up the other pirates, and they all clattered away with a shout, and in a minute or two were stripped and chasing after and tumbling over each other in the shallow, limpid water of the white sandbar. They felt no longing for the little village sleeping in the distance beyond the majestic waste of water. A vagrant current or a slight rise in the river had carried off their raft, but this only gratified them, since its going was something like burning the bridge between them and civilization. Uh, really insightful sort of uh, it's descriptive it's it's rich it's um you can tell that he enjoys the language and enjoys writing description right um here's another one and this one is um just a poem right this is uh, one of the most famous old poems that there is it's by basho and it's uh, basically about frogs jumping into water there are several different translations but here's one i like into the ancient pond a frog jumps water's sound. Um, so again, the whole idea of the poem is it's just creative, it's just trying to capture a moment, it's just descriptive. Um, 
words. And these are good examples of expressive writing. All right. The next type of writing is expository writing. Expository writing is writing that explains something. Um, usually expository writing has a very clear structure, and the language of expository writing is usually really straight to the point, because the whole idea of expository writing is to convey uh, knowledge. Right? It's just basically trying to tell us something, right? Have us to learn something. So. Um, description in the language isn't really so necessary. It's not really so valued in expository writing. Uh, good expository writing is about being clear and about being yeah, straight to the point. Uh, types of expository writing could be events, right? Maybe there's an event or um, a history of something could be expository writing or a biography of somebody. You know, we have a biography of Princess Diana is a good example of an expository piece of writing. Or a process. Maybe we have um, a piece of expository writing that explains how to do something, how to you know, uh, fabricate a chair. Um, we could have another uh, piece of expository writing could explain categories of things. Maybe it's taking, talking about types of stars or um, you know, ex explaining types of classes that you might take. So examples of expository writing are your news stories, for the most part, are expository. They're trying to explain something to us, explain events that are happening. Informative web pages are good examples of expository writing. They're trying to, to tell us something. Reports, right, a report from a committee uh, is a good example of a, uh, these were their findings, and they're just explaining them to us. Or some kind of a briefing, like a briefing of a, um, a court case, just explains what the court case is about. Um, so let's take a look at a couple of examples of expository writing. Okay, here's an example of an expository piece of writing, and this is one that's actually just been happening as I've been creating this particular lesson. Um, it seems pretty intense. Um, sorry, it's a little bit of a, a downer of a topic, but here's a good example of expository writing. At least seven dead, over 200 hurt after Amtrak train derails, rolls on side in Philadelphia. So this was an event that just occurred today. And here's a piece of expository writing that's just trying to tell us about this is what happened. And notice how it jumps right to the point right here. At least seven people were killed and over 200 people hurt after an Amtrak train carrying 238 passengers and five crew members derailed and rolled onto its side in the Port Richmond section of Philadelphia Tuesday night, according to, uh, to officials. Usually news stories start this way. Just give us the facts. What happened? This is it. This is the facts. That's what happened. And then it backs up and goes into more detail about the story. Police said Wednesday that seven people had died after the death toll had risen. Uh, after the death toll had risen to six earlier, when Temple University Hospital officials confirmed one patient had died of injuries overnight. All seven cars in Amtrak Northeast Regional Train 188 derailed and came off the tracks near Franklin Junction on the 2000 block of Wheat Chef Lane shortly after 9 p.m., officials said. The train was heading to New York from Washington, D.C., and had six passengers' cars as well as an engine. Here's an example uh, or a picture to help us understand the story. Here's where the train derailed. And then it moves into a little bit more detail further down in the story. We're getting some accounts of the passengers. All of a sudden, it felt like the brakes were hit hard, and then our car, said Michael Black, one of the passengers. We were, hit, we were third from the last, just slowly starting going over to the side. I tried to brace my arm against it and then just got off. Daniel Hernandez, who lives close to the tracks, heard the derailment. It sounded like a bunch of shopping carts crashing into each other, he said. Hernandez says the crashing sound lasted a few seconds, and he heard chaos and screaming. Um, so there's an example, and the story goes on from there into more detail. But good example of expository writing, a new story. It's basically just trying to explain something to us. Here's another piece of expository writing. Instead of trying to explain a new story to us, sometimes expository writing tries to explain um, uh, other things to us. Maybe we go to a health website like WebMD to learn more about a condition that we might have. Here's another condition. This is obviously a lot less serious than the last story, although probably still very annoying for somebody who might suffer it. Uh, this is the overview of restless leg syndrome. And like we can see from the table of contents here, 
You can jump to different sections and find out more about the symptoms of uh, restless leg, exams and tests, treatment, home, uh, and it starts with just a basic explanation of what it is. Restless leg syndrome is a disorder related to sensation and movement. People with restless leg syndrome have an unpleasant feeling or sensation in parts of their bodies when they lie down to sleep. Most people also have very strong, a very strong urge to move, and moving sometimes makes them feel better. But all this movement makes it hard or impossible to get enough sleep. Restless leg syndrome usually affects the leg, legs, uh, but it can cause unpleasant feelings in the arms, torsos, or even a phantom limb, a part of the limb that has been amputated. Um, so it goes on to explain more about restless leg syndrome. Women are more likely to get it when they're pregnant. And it also has, you know, like I just said, you can jump to different sections and learn more about it. Another good piece of expository writing here. Basically anything that's explaining something to us, telling us something. Let's jump back to the PowerPoint here. In addition to uh, the expository writing and expressive writing, the last kind of writing that we have is the argumentative kind of writing. Um, and this is probably the kind of writing that you're going to see mostly in college. Well, expository you'll see quite a bit too, because you will be reading lots of news stories, sometimes you'll be reading reports, so you'll definitely see expository, and you'll see argumentative. Expressive you probably won't see so much. Argumentative type writing is writing that expresses an opinion, or tries to convince somebody of something. Um, and since writing is really all about, uh, or sorry, since college is really all about sharing ideas, um, opinions are at a premium in college, and so you're going to read a lot of opinion type writing, or writing that uh, conveys an idea. Um, so that's why I want, this is one of the most important for college. Um, there's all kinds of uh, expositive er, uh, all kinds of argumentative types of writing. Reviews are a good example of argumentative type writing, like a book review or a film review. Um, these are people who are trying to tell us why we should read a book or why we should not go see a movie. Um, those are always argumentative. Also, opinion and editorial pieces, uh, sometimes referred to as op-ed. You see op-ed pieces. You hear people mention that word. It uh, refers to opinions or editorial pieces that are published in newspapers or magazines, and those are opinion pieces as well. In addition, uh, mu much of your uh, academic type articles are going to be opinion pieces. Research studies are typically argumentative, and so are academic journal essays, uh, which are the kinds of things that um, you're going to be expected to read in college. So let's take a quick look at a couple of samples back here to the internet. Okay, let's look at a sample of a, an opinion piece. Here's one that's current for today. It's in USA Today, the newspaper, and clearly we can see that this is an opinion piece on the title, Why Zernayev Should Not Get the Death Penalty Column. And it has a subtitle, Boston, or Bomber's Guilt Never in Question, But Life Without Parole Will Let Him Drift Off Into Obscurity. So here, even before we start reading, we can see that this particular author, James Allen Fox, is obviously against the death penalty, and he's in favor of Zarnayev getting life in prison for the Boston bombing. Um, kind of depressing topics we have here. I guess that's how the news goes. Let's just take a quick look at um, this piece and see where we can see it turning into his opinion. So he starts, despite great anticipation and intensive news media coverage, the trial of Zokar Zanayev for his role in the 2013 Boston Marathon bombing has, up to this point, had as much suspense as a law and order re rerun. The guilty verdict on all 30 counts rendered by the jury of seven women and five men inside a packed federal courthouse here came as no surprise. Not even the defendant showed any emotion as each count was read aloud. From the very start of the proceedings five weeks ago, the defense has conceded defeat in the guilty phase of the refurcated capital murder trial. In her opening statement to the jury, defense counsel Judy Clark admitted that Zarnayev did indeed join his now-deceased older brother uh, Tamerlan in, in detonating two explosions near the finish line of the storied foot race, killing three spectators, including an eight-year-old boy, and injuring more than 260. Despite def the defense's concession, the prosecution proceeded to call 92 witnesses to the stand, 
presenting in excruciating detail the pain and devastation caused by the Zunai brothers as part of their self-styled jihadist attack on America. The purpose was to set the stage for the real challenge that lies ahead in the penalty phase, when the jury will be tasked with choosing between the death penalty and a sentence of life uh, without parole eligibility. I'm certainly not al alone in believing that the federal government should have saved time and, and great expense uh, by negotiating a guilty plea in exchange for a life sentence, just as it had in the case of the Unabomber Theodore Kaczynski. Besides persuading the jury to recommend death for Zanayev, which requires unanimous vote, is hardly the slam dunk that characterized the uncontested guilt portion of the trial. Here, we have a clear shift to his opinion. Here he has an eye, so we know now we're moving into his point of view, and we're going to start to hear why we should not um, go for the death penalty, but instead prefer life without parole. And he gives us the idea here that trial is not a slam dunk. It's going to be a hard uh, sell to get people to convict him of the death penalty. So Fox just uh, supports the idea of um, not getting the death penalty in life in prison. So there's another good example of um, argumentative typewriting. Let's take a look at just one more example, and then we'll move into the end of the slide. Okay, so here's another example of uh, an argumentative piece of writing. This one's uh, maybe a little bit more intimidating looking at first um, than the op-ed piece that we just looked at. Here's an example of an academic journal. And most academic journals and research studies end up being academic. So this is a research study that's published in Eating Disorders Journal, and it was called Child Beauty Pageant Contestants Associations with Adult Disordered Eating and Mental Health. So basically, they're making the argument that child beauty pageant contestants end up having disordered eating and mental health as adults. And here's their abstract. This study evaluated the association between childhood beauty pageants and adult disordered eating, body dissatisfaction, depression, and self-esteem. Eleven women who participated in childhood beauty pageants were matched on age and BMI with eleven non-participating women. Childhood pageant participants scored higher on body dissatisfaction, interpersonal distrust, and impulse dysregulation than non-participants and showed a trend toward greater ineffectiveness. There were no significant differences between groups in measures of bulimia, body perception, depression, and self-esteem. These findings suggest childhood beauty pageant participation may influence adult body dissatisfaction, interpersonal distrust, and impulse dysregulation, but not bulimic behaviors, body perception, depression, or self-esteem. So there you have it. There's their argument based on their research study of 11 participants. And you can read the whole thing. Um, it's kind of long. The abstract gives us a good sense of it. We will be looking at stuff like this later in the semester. Now let's jump back to our PowerPoint. So that's argumentative writing. So there you have the three types, right? The expressive writing, probably won't see so much in college unless you take a, a literature or humanities class. Expository writing, writing that explains, um, you will definitely see. You'll be reading news stories in lots of classes, including this one. And you'll also be reading uh, reports frequently for classes and research papers. And lastly, argumentative writing, you're going to see quite a bit, because that's where your research studies come in, and those are important for reading in college, as well as some of your opinion pieces, um, and most of college is based on sharing ideas, so those are all going to be important. So let's jump to the end of this video lesson. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, I'm going to give you your assignment now, which is your first journal. So for this short first journal, what I want you to do is to write a short expository. Remember, writing that explains. Write a short expository essay explaining three types of people you see at malls. Um, I'm not going to give you much direction on this one, um, you know, and I just want you to take that question, try to write a short essay explaining three types of people you see at malls. You can categorize them any way you want, you can structure it any way you want. We're going to use this journal uh, in, in our discussion in the next video lesson. Um, but just keep in mind what you know, do the best you can with it. There's no particular length I'm looking for. Um, you know, it, you probably want it to be, I'd, I'd say between one and two pages is a good typical length for a journal. So try to get it in about that range and um, do what you can with it. After you type it up into Microsoft Word, your short essay explaining three types of people you see at malls, I want you to 
email it to me as an attachment. Send it to my email, which again uh, is you know, important, brookswinchell at go.cambridgecollege.edu. Um, so open up your email, put my address in there, attach your file that you just created about three types of people you see at malls. Um, email it to me, and I'll get back to you within 24 hours, and I'll try to give you a response to, and I'll give you a response with a grade from between 1 to 4. So again, if you get a grade of 3 or 4, you want to just move on to lesson 3. If I give you a grade of 1 to 2, um, review this video again. But I'm not going to do that for this lesson. Uh, this, this journal is going to be relatively straightforward. Everybody will probably get a 3 or 4 on it. Uh, since we're not really giving you direction, we're not really looking for much specific, I just want you to answer that question. Um, so do what you can with that and um, email it to me and we'll proceed from there. And also email me if you have any questions or if you get stuck, but it's relatively straightforward. Um, so once I get back to you, move on to lesson three, and I'll see you back there then.